all his friends, all his family, everyone that knows him knows that it's it's not, you know, it, it's not gonna work. Ooh. Oh, Chris Harrison. Hold on. <laughs> it was a long night. Are you tired this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any idea that Barb was going to take things that far? No. I knew Barb was not in a good mood. I walked out on stage to say, I always say hi to everybody before the live show, just to get the uh, audience excited. And then Barb and Peter Senior were sitting there. I said, hey guys, it was not a good look. And so I thought, well, I, and I didn't know why she was upset because I did not get a chance to talk to him for the show. And then boom, we're live. And I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Now look, I knew she wasn't over the top excited about the Madison prospect. And at that point we knew that's where this was headed, but I did not see the rest coming, Armageddon. I was shocked, I was sad, yeah. uh, I was disappointed in the whole thing, to be honest. Uh, I, Going with my gut instinct in the room, I, I felt terrible, I felt terrible. What? And it wasn't anything I could fix, I tried to fix it, I tried to save it, because that's kind of my instinct of being a caretaker of like, I gotta put this family back, because I don't want this family to be hurt. Mm -hmm. I do like Barb, I think she's a good woman, I think, you know, Peter is a good guy, but I also love Peter, and I think Madison's, you know, deserves better too. It's about optics and it's about how you put things. I'm a firm believer, you can be right and be completely wrong. Mm. And in my opinion, that was a great case for that. You don't, you know, I don't know if you need to say to your son later, I told you so. <laughs> um, and that's what that was all about. It was about her saying, I told you so later. Look, if he's gonna be with her and they're gonna break up, which is what you're predicting, then so be it, let him go break up. Mm -hmm. You know, who's hurt by this? The only harm done last night was this family being splintered last night on my show, and I hated it. She said to Peter, you're gonna have to fail to succeed. She's gonna have to fail to succeed. That's it. <laughs> so that seemed to be her indicating you guys are going to break up. What do you think Barb should have done differently? Peter should have done differently. Maddie should have done differently last night. I mean, maybe a holy host of things. Um, <laughs> you know, Madison kind of had her guard up and, and, and kind of took a shot too that probably spurred things on. But, you know, I will put it back to Barb and to Peter Sr. of just like, in that moment, be gracious. Just take one for the team and just mm -hmm. say, look, I don't know if this is going to work out. We're going to do our best to, you know, to make the best of it for our son. And I felt bad for Peter in that moment having to turn to his mom and saying, hey, stop. Mm -hmm. um, I love her. Yeah, it's it's good for him for having that backbone. Good for Madison. Um, it just it was seemed like a really sad situation, and I, and it just kept getting worse. And then when Barb said what she said to Peter Senior, whispering in under her breath in Spanish, as if no one in this country speaks Spanish. I mean, that you're not was... speaking alien. <laughs> it was Spanish. That Google Translate. Got a, a, yeah. a lot of traffic last now, night. Now there is some back and forth. Did she say moss? Did she say mall? Meaning more or say something bad. Mm -hmm. But either way, it was protect me. And say something. Say something and protect me. Help me. Again, the optics aren't good. That means you're making that moment about you. You're not mm. making it about your son. Let's talk about the ride home for this family. Mm -hmm. Is Peter still living at home? Did he head home with mom and dad after that show? I can tell you this because we are neighbors, literally. Um, he wasn't at my house last night. I fully expected to just show up and Peter was on my porch. With like, hey, bag. hey, bud, can, can I, I can crash I stay? Your yeah, couch yeah, man, you can stay here. <laughs> so let's talk to you about the the commercial breaks. Was Madison talking to Barb at all? Was Barb talking to Hannah Ann at all? We don't want them to talk. And I don't think Madison was talking anyway. I looked at her and she was just, she really got blindsided and she was pissed. Hi, Barb. Rightfully so. I mean, yeah, yeah she, she got blindsided by Barb and rightfully so. She was pretty mad about it. She didn't need that or expect it or want that. And I think she, in her way, did the best to kind of diffuse it, but she was pretty angry. Mm. And so there's no talking during the commercial breaks. What about Barb in the box? Did you have any idea Barb would be picture in picture this Okay, so in my finale? defense, I didn't know Barb was in a box. <laughs> so that's how, so I'm not seeing programming. I do see 
things that are put up, like if, if there's a package to go to or something like that, um, but I don't see on-air programming, so I'm not seeing what you guys are watching at home on ABC. So was that kind of a decision as the night was going, just That's keep going to Barb? executive producers and our director, Ken Fuchs, that, that calls that shot. And like they're not in my ear going, Barb's in a box. Um, and But I did, would, I would look over and I would see the eye rolling and I would see the looks. And I mean, I would have been dead if looks could kill last night. I mean, she was firing. She was applauding when Hannah Ann was breaking up with Peter. One thing, and I haven't told anybody this, and I told, well, it's not true, I told Peter. Okay. Um, when Hannah Ann spoke her truth to Peter, Barbara led the applause. She started it. She didn't join in. She started the applause. And that's when I thought, this is going to be an awkward night. And I told Peter, I said, I think your mom started the applause for Hannah Ann. What did he say? He said, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Peter and Madison, like you said, Madison looked a little frustrated. Their body language was a bit Not separate. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about how they can move forward from here? I don't know. You know, it's easy to say they're going to break up. It's easy to say any couple's not going to make it because the odds are you're not. Peter himself said we have an only an uphill battle. They do, and, and that's what a, what a terrible place to start. That isn't how a relationship should start. And you and I have talked about this. They, they do deliver what's called a 747. LZ Big phrase. statement. Big, big one coming so, in. So, you know, when he says love conquers all and all that, you know, I don't know. They, they do have massive real life issues of religion, philosophy, how they live their lives, where they live their lives. Um, you know, down to I don't drink, you do. You go, so there's a lot for them to handle. I should have really picked up on the first red flag that you gave to me was when you wanted to reach out to Hannah Brown to find closure with her. Hannah Ann yeah. told everyone Peter had reached out to Hannah Brown for closure. She said on the Bachelor Happy Hour podcast that this happened in January, right when those Hannah Brown episodes were airing, the premiere. Yeah. So did you have any idea about I that? I didn't, but I'm not shocked. And I, I, I think it sound worse than it really is. My guess is Peter probably gave Hannah a heads up that he was engaged. Probably off the record, he called her because, look, we all get ambushed. We'll come in and, you know, I'll be sitting with you and you'll be like, hey, did you know? And I think he just said, out of respect, hey, I just want you to know how this ended so you're not ambushed and so you know. So I, my guess that's what Peter was doing, was being a good guy. I don't think he called and said, you know, is there still a chance for us? That's mm -hmm. what it kind of sounded like last night. Very, very unlikely that was the case. Okay. I can't confirm it. I don't know. Just that's kind of the thing we would do is say, hey, why don't you call Hannah and just let her know? Yeah. Out of respect. Yeah. So Hannah Ann did blow everybody away last night with her strong woman vibes. Yeah. She told Peter how she felt. So word of advice, if you want to be with a woman, you need to become a real man. Was she ever considered for Bachelorette? Because she certainly put on an audition last night. Yeah, at uh, what time was it? 9.01 last night, California time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably very strongly considered to be there. I mean, we are extremely happy to have Claire, but yeah, that's the kind of woman you want as the Bachelorette. Um, I think she may already be on the beaches in paradise. Uh, she might be the Hannah G of this season of already there, first on the beach. Uh, I think she's a great candidate, so maybe. I mean, you had Neil Lane in the audience. Did yeah. you think Peter could have proposed? Nah, not really. Okay. No. <laughs> Nothing was in Neil's no, briefcase. No, I don't think anything was in the briefcase. <laughs> Kelly was in the audience, too. That was a little. Were you playing with everybody little a little Easter bit? egg for you. Uh, little, little Easter egg. A little red herring and a red yeah, dress. Yeah, we were okay. just having a little fun, and, and, and kudos to Kelly for playing along with us, because there were so many rumors about, so many theories you know, season. Julie, the producer, which was ridiculous, and the rumor about Kelly, which was ridiculous, and, and ultimately, I told her to put on a, a dress, just be rubbing her stomach the whole time. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too much. A <laughs> little baby bump to yeah. theory. I mean, Peter did say, my season won't be spoiled, and it wasn't. Yeah. How did he make those promises so early I don't on? know. <laughs> it was really dumb of him to say that, and I told him, I think, you know, his inexperience in this business, it should have been spoiled because there's really no reason why it shouldn't. There was 90 people at that proposal in Australia, in uh -huh. Alice Springs, so it's not like it couldn't have gotten out, as it mm. does sometimes. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why the, the spoilers couldn't come up with it because it really wasn't brain surgery. By the way, Hannah called Peter out for not really telling her the whole truth about how Madison left before proposing. Yeah. Where do you fall on that? <sighs> Revisionist history? <laughs> Here's what I think happened. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I look. It's, again, it's all about perspective and what he went through. And I think the the way he was looking at it is he did love Hannah Ann. And the fact that Madison was gone, however she went, this was his sign and this was his moment to finally move on and concentrate on Hannah Ann, mm -hmm. which 
I, I, I will say he did. He loved this girl, and he still does. It's just... Barb still does. Barb loves, loves Hannah. Hannah. Let me tell you who's coming to Thanksgiving and who's Hannah. not. Yeah, yeah Hannah Ann will be there carving the turkey. I, I think Kelly might be there. Kelly might be, yeah. <laughs> Barb loved yeah. every woman on this season. Other than so Madison. Massive. Last final questions for you. Uh, Barb mentioned three hours of waiting for Madison quite a lot. Yeah. Was she really waiting for three hours? I don't know the exact timing. Okay. Um, but they did wait, and they waited a long time. But this is what was interesting. And again, putting it on Madison, not fair. Because Peter and Madison were talking. It was a conversation. Right. It wasn't makeup. It wasn't that she slept in. It wasn't that she needed to eat. They were having a very serious conversation between each other as to if this is going to work. And if it's not, I don't want to go meet your family. I don't want to bring another family into this and take this step unless we're serious about this. So, by the way, a conversation that needed to be had. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry they flew across the world and had to wait, but I think it was important and it was just as much on Peter as it yeah. was Madison. Madison wasn't throwing a diva fit. So that wasn't fair to put it just on her at that time. We saw Claire Crawley on the Bachelor finale. This was her first big sit down right. with you since the announcement. One thing I've always adored about you and respected is you've never given up on love. You've always fought for it. Uh, how much has that shaped you? I never will give up for it. And we also, are now seeing her men for the first time. You guys revealed her cast. Claire has said she's totally fine dating younger guys. I wanna see this, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, but you know, weren't you guys trying to give the fans a bit of a, hey, we hear you on casting an older bachelorette, so why not have some older contestants too? We're always casting and we're always looking for good people and if we find somebody along the way between now and production and we think they're great, yeah, we'll put them in. Yeah. And we'll have 35, 38, 40. The great thing about The Bachelor, now, and this is on all seriousness, we have no rules. Right. There's not like, you know, the Bill of Rights for The Bachelor. We can do what we want. And if we think it's going to help somebody, then we'll do it. Tyler Cameron's very good friend and roommate, Matt, is on this season. Yeah. How did that end up happening? So this is a very incestuous group here. Do you, do you know that where Hannah Ann came from? She knew Hannah G. Hannah G. Yes. So Hannah G called us and said, hey, I have this great girl. And that, that it happens a lot. There's these people we love, like a Tyler or Hannah. And they say, hey, look, I have a great person. I have a great roommate. I have a great friend. And we meet them. And they go through the casting process. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Thanks. So it's kind of like dating. You know, who do you trust? It's like, well, you trust your friends. And so these people often give us some great contestants. OK. So how do you think Matt's going to do? Swell. <laughs> He's going to have the inside. Uh, inside. Tyler's going to have given him some tips. Right. Well, I mean, Hannah Ann made it very far. Let's be honest. Unless Tyler gives him his abs, that's really what's going to be. That's the difference maker. She has been this woman who's been on the show yeah. many times before, the oldest bachelorette ever, but she seems like she's open to a lot. Yeah. Why was she the perfect choice? Well, I, again, like you pointed out, there was this knee-jerk reaction to the girls being young on Peter's season. So we thought, you know what? Look, we have this woman who's never given up on love. We adore her. Claire's always been a favorite of the producers, kind of been a part of our family. But I like the fact that she went away, kind of left the limelight, left, you know, the bachelor life. She wasn't a Coachella or stagecoach, as far as I know. Um, and she was still always out there and, and on, our, on our mind of, could we help this woman find love? And I think just the timing of everything worked out really well with the discussion that's going on, and I think she's going to be fantastic. I think she's going to be a great bachelorette. I really do. Was Claire a bit of an answer to some of the fan criticism you guys have been getting about this season? I mean, a little bit. You know, we have to be very careful mm -hmm. in, in how you react to social media because in all due respect, it is the loudest minority. It's not the majority of people speaking. Um, it's those that are going to choose to actually go say something, which is very few people, honestly. Most people are just living their lives. And so you have to be careful about the tail wagging the dog instead of vice versa. We're really good at what we do. But yeah, we do listen. And I don't think it was a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think it was a, a big move. But I, I do like the fact that Maybe she's more representative of who's out there and watching the show right now, and we'll see. We'll see what people think. You got a lot of calls from the Kardashians last night. Lady Gaga was tweeting about the show. What did you think of all the major celebrity reactions? Well, a friend of mine called, and friends with Chris Jenner, and so there was a, a whole holy host of Jenners together in <laughs> Kardashians. Watch party. All watching. Yeah, so they have a massive watch party. I do know their fans, and so Kim was there, and uh, Kendall was there. There's some other Jenners there and Kardashians, and so they just wanted the tea. What tea did you give them? Um, they Honestly, they wanted to know the same things. Like, okay, as soon as the camera's cut, what happened? Okay. What happened with Peter? What happened with this? And like, 
Are they going to make it? What was Barb really like? Was she? And so they just want to know what what was really going on. They're just huge fans, and I didn't know Gaga was watching. Gaga said that she did not want Peter to break up with Hannah Ann for Madison. <laughs> she called it stupid love. Plug in her song, but that's what she said. Your queen. I mean, Mother Monster weighed in on the Mother Monster. <laughs> That was a pun. I love Barb. And we are so excited uh, for Listen to Your Heart. Bachelor in Paradise is coming up. Yes, April 13th, Listen to Your Heart. We permit that. By the way, I'm unbelievably excited about that. Yeah. It's It turned out far better than I ever dreamed it would. And you have the perfect drink for people to partake in while yes. watching. Obviously, the collaboration with uh, Seagram's Escapes, mm -hmm. Tropical Rose, and it's awesome.